Hey guys, congratulations, you made it to the weekend. We have two updates for you today. The first one is we will go over the light curve of Tabby Star that has been updated for today, September 22nd from Tabby's team. And we will also update you on our earlier finding with additional data that the material that is causing the long-term accelerating dimming of Tabby Star is not gas or dust, but is a non-transparent material, perhaps solid, that blocks and or absorbs all wavelengths of light equally. So here is an updated normalized light curve of Tabby Star taken in the R band from two different observatories. And we are currently resting at approximately nominal flux for the time being. Nothing uh, really seems to be happening at the moment, guys. Um, some of our folks have asked, uh, you know, why does Tabby Star slightly brighten just before a short term dimming event? We will answer this in an upcoming video. It's a really neat explanation that a lot of folks don't think of. So for our second topic, we will update you with additional data to further back up our earlier conclusion that the material that is causing the long-term accelerating dimming of Tabby Star is not a gas or dust, but is a non-transparent material, perhaps solid, that blocks and or absorbs all wavelengths of light equally. As a refresher, this is a graph uh, we've shown before of the short-term dimming event of Tabby Star in May of this year, 2017. And there were three different filters being used to measure the flux. The red curve in the graph represents the flux with the longest wavelength bandpass, and the blue line represents the filter with the shortest wavelength bandpass. So we bring this graph up to show that different wavelengths of light are attenuated or decrease differently based on the material that is blocking, absorbing, or scattering the light. If the material is totally solid, no light will penetrate it regardless of its wavelength, and there should be no differentiation between the light curves of the different filters. If the material is, say, interstellar gas or dust, there will be a differentiation between the light curves of the different filters. The shorter wavelengths of light will attenuate or decrease more than the longer wavelengths of light, like what you see in this graph between the red curve, the longest wavelength, and the blue curve, the shortest wavelength. Just as an aside, guys, before we go any further, some folks have speculated that these dust clouds that we are seeing with Tabby Star, like this one, um, are the product of asteroid mining to acquire materials to build structures around the star. They believe that the process of crushing and milling the asteroids and extracting out the valuable elements and discarding the residual waste as a cloud of dust to free float may be the source. So if this is the cause, perhaps with very precise spectroscopy, we may be able to determine the missing elements within such a dust cloud. So continuing on guys, if we take the absolute value of the difference between the B band and the R band, this can be graphically represented by a segment that has a link equal to the distance between the B-band and the R-band curves at any point in time. We have this green segment which represents that. So let's arbitrarily give it a value or length of one unit here. As the material continues to accumulate and concentrate along our line of sight between us and the star, the next segment at a later point in time will be slightly longer if the material differentially absorbs or scatters light based on its wavelength. The graph to the right shows the progression of this and the difference between the B band minus the R band as we step forward in time as shown. Notice that the progression of the curve of this graph slopes upward to the right as time progresses. This is the same characteristic curve one would expect if the material causing the long-term dimming of Tabby Star was dust or gas or other material that differentially absorbs or scatters light based on its wavelength. And just for completeness, as this material starts to move on and disperse, the difference between the B-band and R-band measurements decreases and the curve on the graph returns back to its previous level. So guys, we are going to show an update to our B-band versus V-band data to show you if anything has changed from our last report, where we uh, continue to conclude that the material causing the long-term dimming of Tabby Star was non-transparent and perhaps solid. And in addition, guys, we now have data in the I and R bands that are being taken at the same time the B and V data 
is being taken. And that's compliments of David Lane. So we now have this additional data to look at. This is the uh, additional data since our last update on this topic that we're now able to add to the larger table of the B band minus the V band table. And graphing the B minus V band deltas, we get this graph. As you can see, we are still showing a flat response over a 12 month period where we had approximately a 3% drop in flux during that same time period. So if the material causing this long-term dimming were dust or gas or any other material that differentially absorbs or scatters light of different wavelengths, it should have a, a sloping upward trend to the right as time progresses. But we have a very flat response. This is characteristic of a non-transparent material, guys. Very confident in this conclusion. So let's now look at the other bands. This table contains the R band and B band measurements taken by David Lane over a 5.2 month time frame. And this is the graph of the B minus R band deltas where we had a drop in flux over 1.2%. Notice the flat flux response again over this time period. Again, signifying a non-transparent material. And finally, this table contains the B band minus I band measurements also taken by David Lane over a 5.2 month time frame. And this is the graph of the B minus I band deltas where we again had a drop in flux of over 1.2%, third confirmation of a flat flux response, again over the same time period, different band comparisons. So guys, our previous conclusion still holds. We have a non-transparent material buildup around Tabby Star that is causing the long-term dimming. It is not dust, it is not gas. Well guys, that's all we have for you today. Take care and we will see you in our next video.